In this video, I want to show you how you can use images on your local hard drive and take them in batches into your model as it trains. So images are usually, well, fairly large as far as the data size is concerned. So to bring them all into memory for the training uh, might just overwhelm the system. So I just want to show you how we can use image data generation, taking images in batches as it is needed by your model. So what we're going to do here is to just use some data from the Kaggle website. You can log into kaggle.com, create an account, and there are many, many data sets that you can download. The, the particular one we're looking at here is of skin lesions. And uh, that makes it a classification problem. We have two classes. It's either a benign skin lesion or a malignant skin lesion. Now it's very important then that you have your structure, the, the folder structure, your directory structure put uh, in place properly on your hard drive or your internal drive. So what we're going to have is separate folders or directories for the training data, for the validation data, and for the test data. And in each of those, we're going to have a subdirectory or a subfolder with the separate images. So we're going to have a subdirectory for benign images and a subdirectory for malignant images in each of the training, validation, and test directories. So that's very important. So what I'm showing here is just the RPUBS file that we've uh, knitted and uploaded. As always though, this file, the actual RMD file, the R Markdown file will be available on GitHub. So we're going to use the Keras library. Let's just increase the size here, but there you can see we're using the Keras library. And uh, it is the newest version as of October 2019. In other words, it is the version that goes with TensorFlow 2.0. So let's have a look at how the data was structured. And I'm going to use the file.path function here. And if I pass a series of arguments all inside of quotation marks, it'll string those together uh, as a folder structure. So I'm going to call the first one training underscore deer for directory, validation deer, and test deer. So it's on my D drive. I've got two internal drives on the system. It's in the Kaggle folder, R folder, skin, and then there's a train, a validation, and a test folder. So it's going to create these three folder structures for me. In each of those, I have a benign and malignant, benign, malignant, benign, malignant subdirectory, and in those we have all the photos already separated. And it's very important that this benign, malignant, benign, malignant are spelled exactly the same as far as all these subdirectories are concerned. Lowercase b, lowercase m, everything has got to be exactly the same. Now I'm going to do my training in step sizes. So I'm just going to set up the total number of images that I do have by using the length function. And I'm just going to call that num underscore train underscore benign. And that's going to count list.files, just list all the files in that directory. And I'm, the length is just going to tell me how many files are in there. And I'm just totaling all of those. The total number of training data, total number of validation images then, and the total number of test images. As simple as that. Now for demonstration purposes, uh, for running this code on a, a laptop with a uh, just a small uh, NVIDIA graphics card, I'm just going to make these images exceptionally small. So I'm going to stick with 112 pixels wide and 112 pixels high. And my batch, batch size is going to be a tiny 4. Just so that we can run it on this laptop. Uh, and if you are downing it on a lap, similar laptop with a small GPU, it'll work for you as well. So I'm now going to use this image data generator function. And um, I've put this whole layout here, Keras colon colon, just to show you that that is a function inside of Keras. You don't have to do this Keras colon colon. It's image data generator. Now we can use the image data generator to do all sorts of pre-processing on our files and also data augmentation. So have a look at this. As per usual, I'm going to divide each pixel by 255. That's just normalizing the value of each pixel. I'm going to allow random rotations up till 10 degrees. I'm going to allow a width shift range of 0.15, a height shift range of 0.15, and a horizontal flip and a zoom range of 0.05. So you can look that up on the website, uh, Keras website, Image Data Generator, to tell you what all these things mean. It just means as the image comes in, 
it can do some random changes to the image. That's called image augmentation, and that really helps to generalize your model as it trains. It just creates different views of these images as they come in every time, so as to uh, almost fake, well, I can't say almost, it does, a new image by allowing these random changes to be made to the images every time they are brought in. My image gen validation function here, uh, uh, computer variable here, is going to also be image data gen generator, and all we're going to do there is rescale, and the same with the test. The validation data and the test data, we don't want to augment them at all. It's only for the training data. Now we're going to set up a computer variable train data gen, and then also validation data gen and test data gen, and from those, we're going to use the flow image from directory. That's actually going to do this flow just to grab these files off of your internal drive as they are required. So we're passing the training directory. Remember, that's going to have subdirectories benign and malignant in it. The generator that we are going to use is this one we've just set up, image gen train, to allow for this image augmentation. The target size is then going to be the image size 112112 112. and the class mode is binary in as much as we have two classes and I'm going to set the same up this flow image from images from directory function I'm going to set up that for the validation data gen and for the test data gen so you've got to go through both these steps now let's create a model the model is going to be fairly simple you can see it there I'm going to have two convolutional layers, layers convolutional layer 1 and 2 there's going to be max pooling after each one and a 20% dropout after each one. I'm using 16 kernels and then 32 kernels and the kernel size of 3x3. Three three. The padding we're going to keep the same and the activation function is going to be ReLU. And these are color images. So uh, the, for the input shape in my first layer there, I'm telling the R here that it's 112 by 112 by 3 There's three color channels, of course. Then we're just going to go into flattening all these layers. And our, our hidden layer here is a 512 node dense layer with that activation function. And lastly, a single node. And the activation function is going to be just sigmoid. In other words, um, just so that we can have this uh, binary outcome. There's the model. We see that's 12.8 million parameters that have to be learned, even for such a small little network. Now I'm going to use binary cross entropy as my loss function, uh, Adam as my optimizer, and the metrics is just the accuracy. The training then, I don't just use the fit function now, I use fit generator. Take the modeler's first argument. The model is going to now have to grab these images as required. And so we pass the train data gen computer variable that we saved to generate those images. The step size per epoch we have to specify and we're just going to take the total number of training divided by the batch size so that'll give us the steps to take per epoch and I'm using the floor function there because we need an integer value I'm going to use 10 epochs you see the setup there of my validation data it's also the validation data gen and I've also got to set the step size there I'm going to use a callback and I'm going to use early stopping there we're going to monitor the validation loss we want improvements of at least 0.01 and if it doesn't do that for four steps in a row there, uh, epochs in a row, I should say, we are going to stop. And I'm not going to run it here. If you've downloaded this file, you can run that. And it's usually a tiny little network like this with the image size made so small. Um, you're going to get about around about 70% accuracy. So that's how we would do the accuracy. I'm going to call it score model. I pass that to evaluate generator. So you can't just use evaluate now. You have to use it evaluate under generator. I pass the test data generator to that. And my step size, again, the total test size divided by the batch size. And in this instance, when I knitted this file, we got an accuracy of about 70%, as you can see there. Just as a last little note, remember that you can always save your model in HDF5 format suppose the best format for these models so we just use save underscore model underscore hdf5 we pass the model to that and we're going to call the file skin.h5 because i've set the directory it's actually going to save it in the same directory to reload that is very simple we just use load underscore model underscore hdf5 pass the file to that and the model is there 
with all its hyperparameters and weights and biases. All the parameters are saved. So if I were to just uh, load this model, um, use this load model in the evaluate generator function again, pass the test data gen and the step size to that, I'm going to get it back exactly the same accuracy because all the weights have been saved. So there you go, how to use data that's on your own file, on your own local drives, uh, image files in this instance, and using the image data generator function to take these images as required for the model to train, and you don't have to load all of them inside of memory in one go.